One of the defining moments in almost every single Guardians of the Galaxy trailer is this line right here. Star-Lord. Who? Well, Star-Lord, man. Legendary outlaw. It's a great line that gives us a feel of what to expect in the film, but it does pose an interesting question. Why does Peter Quill go by the name Star-Lord? The answer is a little bit more complicated than you might think at first, but don't worry, because we're gonna get to the bottom of it right now. Welcome to Comic Misconceptions, a show that takes you into detail about the things you think you know about comics. I'm your host, Scott Nicewander, and guys, we are back from our one month vacation. Less of a vacation and more of just me scrambling to move into my new house. I'm still not all the way done yet, but thank you for bearing with us on that. You also might notice that the set looks a little bit different than normal. I don't know if you have noticed, but you, you should have. It was actually designed by my friend Ross. You remember this guy. Yeah, that guy. Big thanks to him for helping out, uh, and if you want to go check out his channel, which I urge you to do, you can go check it out, Comic Cinema. There's a link in the description for you to go watch some of his comic book related videos, like this one right here. But let's talk Guardians of the Galaxy. I am so stoked for this movie, guys. I thought about doing many different videos over many different topics related to the Guardians. I mean, there's just so much to pull from. The original team lineup, the new team lineup, the Nova Corps even, but the more that I thought about it, one question kept coming back to me. Why is Peter Quill called Star-Lord? The trailer makes it seem like it's some alias that he gave himself for his criminal career, but the comics tell a different story. Or should I say, stories. Star-Lord's origin was revealed to us in Marvel Preview number four from 1976 and was written by Steve Englehart, who had an intense knowledge of astrology and really worked that into the character of Star-Lord. The planets align themselves the night that Peter was born. His father, Jake, takes one look at him and says, well, he doesn't look anything like me. And he takes that to mean that Meredith, the mother, had cheated on him and Peter was the result of that affair. Out of anger, Jake takes the newly born Peter Quill outside to kill him. But out of a stroke of luck on Peter's behalf, Jake dies of a heart attack then and there. So he grows up being raised by his mom, Meredith Quill. And one day on the way to school, Peter sees an alien spacecraft and he goes to get his mom to prove to her that alien life exists. Unfortunately, this doesn't work out too well for Meredith, as once the aliens see them, they shoot her dead. This is the one constant throughout all of Star-Lord's origins. Peter then grows up in an orphanage, learning everything he can about outer space, destined to be an astronaut so that he can someday find the aliens that killed his mom and get revenge even though nobody believes his story that aliens exist in the first place. He was very rough around the edges and made no friends, and it was actually because of this that he was denied the mission to Mars that he so desperately wanted. He did get a second chance later on an orbiting space station. It wasn't the trip to Mars that he wanted, but it was a start. And it was actually on that space station that Peter finally got to prove that he wasn't crazy. Alien life did exist. Some sort of alien life form appeared to everyone in a shared vision and told them that in two weeks, a person of their choosing would become a Star-Lord. They all have a meeting to discuss what they should do and Peter steps up and volunteers, I will be the Star-Lord. He thinks this will finally give him the ability to avenge his mom's death, but he gets denied the opportunity because they think someone with more experience should be Star-Lord. Two weeks later, they choose Peter's rival at NASA, Greg Harrelson, to take up the mantle. Peter is outraged, and rightfully so. He had gone his whole life believing in alien life only to be ridiculed, and now that he finally has proof, he's still treated like garbage. So, he decides to take the mantle of Star-Lord by force. A lot of force. He gets cornered and the guards all shoot at him in unison. When the smoke clears, they believe that the lasers have vaporized Peter Quill out of existence. But that is not the case. The moment they shot at him was the same moment that a Star-Lord had to be chosen. Peter was not vaporized, but transported through space to be at the feet of a being who calls himself the Master of the Sun. The Master of the Sun reveals that Peter's middle name is Jason, which Peter had never told anyone before. I mean, it's kind of out of nowhere, but I guess it proves that the Master of the Sun is the real deal. I do have a hard time believing that you can be an astronaut and not having ever written your middle name down on any paperwork or forms or something, but I don't know how space works. Peter's costume appears out of nowhere as the Master of the Sun grants him the title of Star-Lord. The only problem is that Peter doesn't know what a Star-Lord is. Are they supposed to just observe and document things that go on in the galaxy, or maybe supposed to be uh, political representatives trying to unify all the planets? 
Unfortunately, that's never explicitly stated in this story. The Master of Sun does give Peter a gun that can shoot the four elements of fire, water, air, and earth. Then he gives Peter the satisfaction of killing the aliens that killed his mom. There is some question about whether that experience was real or maybe it was just a way for the Master of the Sun to purge the urge of vengeance out of Peter. We'll find out later that it was indeed the latter. But that's pretty much it for this story. We find out that Peter calls himself Star-Lord because he stole the title from somebody he didn't like. And it's probably some sort of intergalactic police officer because everybody likes those. But this story does leave us with a couple big questions. Why didn't Peter look like his father, Jake? Why were the aliens on Earth in the first place? And why did they shoot Meredith Quill so violently? And what's the importance of Peter's middle name being Jason? So let's next dive into Marvel preview number 11 from just one year later, where they reinvent the character of Star-Lord, taking out the astrological aspect of it because quite frankly, nobody but Englehart knew enough about it to make it work. It is a fantastic read and if you can somehow get your hands on it, I encourage you to. It's super great, but the important part comes at the end when Peter and friends stop a coup on the Empire on the planet Sparta. The Emperor was revealed to be, dun dun dun, Peter's real father, Jason. Jason was on the way back to Sparta from exploring space when he heard that there was a war breaking out, but his ship broke down above Earth and he was forced to make a crash landing. He was pulled from the wreckage by Meredith Quill, who nursed him back to health and helped him repair his ship. They got to talking, and then they got to not talking, if you know what I mean. But about a year later, Jason had to return to Sparta to help with the war efforts. Jason's ship reading showed that Meredith was pregnant with his child, and he didn't want to risk taking the love of his life and his unborn son to a place of war. So he wiped Meredith's memory of ever meeting him. Jason left, Meredith married Jake, and they had their son, Peter. And that's also why Peter didn't look anything like Jake, because he was really half alien. Years later, when the war was tipping in his favor, Jason sent his uncle Gareth to retrieve Meredith and Peter to bring them to Sparta so they can live together as a family. Unfortunately, Gareth was the one who staged the coup to overthrow the Empire. So instead of retrieving Meredith and Peter, he sent a bunch of lizard-like aliens to kill them. Jason is relieved to see that his son still lives and invites Peter to take his rightful place on the throne. Peter kind of angrily denies this because he's an adventurer. He wants to go explore the universe and not be tied down to one planet. So he leaves abruptly to go carve himself a legend. So we have all that information now, gaps filled in and a pretty nice origin story focused less on astronomical phenomenon and more just on fun sci-fi adventures. This will help us as we uncover our latest origin of Peter Quill that was revealed to us not too long ago in 2013 from Guardians of the Galaxy Point One. In it we see a simplified origin of Star-Lord that takes away anything that's kind of weird and overly complicated and just leaves us with the bare essentials. Jason, now spelled with an apostrophe where the A should be, crash lands on Earth to be rescued by Meredith Quill. She and Jason hit it off pretty nicely and end up doing the no pants dance, but it's time for Jason to leave and head back to his planet, which is now called Spartax. Upon his departure, Meredith discovers that she is pregnant. Instead of being mind wiped and ending up with Jake, she just goes about her life raising Peter and waiting for the day when Jason can return so that they can all be a family. One day there's a bright light in the yard and Meredith believes that Jason has finally returned, but Unfortunately, it's an alien race known as the Badoon. They shoot and kill her. And this is where the story gets a little bit more interesting than the other ones. The Badoon race inside to also kill off Peter, but Peter finds a shotgun and kills them both in one blast. He then finds the gun that his mother hid from Jason when he first crash landed there. The remaining Badoons, Badoons, Badoon. The remaining Badoon blow up Peter's house as he barely escapes. In the following issue, Guardians of the Galaxy number one, we see that Peter is confronted by his father Jason, who tells him that he is the firstborn of the Spartax Empire, and therefore it is his birthright to be named Star-Lord of Spartax. Peter describes this as kind of being a prince-like role. So there you have it, from interplanetary police officer to royal title. The name Star-Lord is a little bit more complicated than say Spider-Man. It's even spelled differently on occasions with and without the hyphen. From just what I've seen in the trailer, I can't imagine they're gonna go the route of space police. That really seems like a job for the Nova Corps. Uh, but as for Peter Quill being royalty, well, I guess only time will tell. I'm curious to see what you guys think. Which one of these explanations for the name Star-Lord do you like more? Space cop or royalty? 
Let me know in the comments. And if this is your first time hanging out with us here at NerdSync, please do hit that big sexy subscribe button down below. We do fun comic book videos just like this one every single week, and I don't want you to miss out on any of it. Once again, I'm Scott. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram, and I will see you guys right here next week for more things that you thought you knew about comics. See ya. This issue is weird, but in a good way. It's fun and funny and just bizarre. All God is stopped when Novar kisses the brain of the world to let it know that it's not in any danger, buddy. And it ends with Phantom X shrinking down the world with a shrink ray he stole from some sort of doctor named Doom?